Hey guys, what's up? And thanks for taking a couple of minutes and checking out today's tip that we're going to be doing. And you know, the, uh, the last couple days, you know, I've been doing those videos, uh, from some raw footage on Table Rock Lake on the water there. And, um, a lot of the subscribers have noticed I've been throwing my crankbaits on a spinning rod. And today I'm going to give you, uh, some tips and advice on why you should be throwing your crankbaits in March, your March type crankbaits on a spinning rod because it's just a lot better way to do it. So I'm gonna go over and show you guys why I did it and how I did it and everything like that. But just one quick reminder, uh, tonight Johnny and I have our Fish the Moment live pod podcast, our weekly Tuesday night podcast, seven o'clock Central Standard Time. Check it out on the new Fish the Moment live uh, YouTube channel. Hope to see you guys there tonight. Okay, let's get a little bit into this spinning rod cranking deal. <clears throat> you know, spinning rods are they're sort of an underutilized tool in bass fishing, in my opinion. I think a lot of it is because, you know, people, uh, you know, anglers grow up, they watch certain anglers, you know, throw in certain setups and rigs, and they try to emulate that. But a lot of it has to do with maximizing the efficiency of your equipment on the water. And for me, using my March crankbaits on a spinning rod is a matter of efficiency. And I'm gonna explain to you why that is. Uh, first of all, let's talk about the crankbaits we use. When you're talking about March crankbaits, you know, the pre-spawn type crankbaits, you're talking about crankbaits like flat side crankbaits, um, the wiggle wart type crankbaits, um, the shad wraps, um, those lighter type crankbaits that sort of run in that four to six foot zone. That's sort of the March pre-spawn cranking type deal. A lot of times these crankbaits, you know, they're sort of like, you know, this Mega Bass uh, Sonic side crankbait. They're uh, lighter crankbaits. Um, they don't cast extremely well in the wind. And they're not really designed to bomb out there a long way to try to maximize the depth. Although you do want to maximize the depth within the range that it is. So here's the advantages of using a spinning rod over a bait caster. First of all, when you're using a spinning rod, for the crankbait uh, categories that I'm talking about. Again, the flat side, shad wraps, you know, wiggle warts, you know, the, all that type of stuff that we use, even small rattle traps, that type of stuff. They catch a lot of wind. And when you're dealing with uh, pre-spawn bass, especially depending upon the water clarity you're in, sometimes you're wanting to maximize the depth that that pre-spawn crankbait goes. For example, let's take, say for example, if you're using a shad wrap one of everybody's all time favorites they've been using for a long time. The line size that you use and your casting distance on a shad wrap is gonna determine the depth. So a lot of times on just a regular size shad wrap, like the number five, you want, a bait, you want that bait to get down there at its maximum depth, which is sometimes six, seven, even eight feet at times. In order to maximize that depth, you've gotta make a long cast with it and you've gotta use light line. I use, when I'm using those, you know, baits like the sonic side and the, and the flat side crank baits and, you know, that type of stuff, um, most of the time I'm using six pound test line because I can cast six pound test line 20% further than further line. I can get it down deeper than other people can. And if you're trying to use a bait caster, I don't care if you're using a wiggle wart or shad wrap or flat side or whatever. If you're trying to use a bait caster that most people don't go below 10 pound test on a bait caster, you're losing out on two to three foot of your depth attainment, you know, simply because your line size and your casting length. Because I promise you, I can cast, I can cast a light bait like a shad wrap 25% further than anybody could on a bait caster outfit. So from that standpoint, it's simply more efficient. It allows you to get the bait deeper, um, it allows you to maximize the zone that that bait is in that people can't with a bait caster. Also, again, talking about wind. A lot of times in the pre-spawn, you have a lot of wind, 10, 20 mile an hour winds. Unless you're casting with the wind, those baits cast like potato chips on a bait caster. And, and I can take a spinning rod and I can cast at a 45 degree angle in a hard wind, um, with the wind, whatever. Again, I can maximize my distance with a spinning rod a lot more. Second factor you want to consider is bait manipulation. <clears throat> when I'm using a spinning rod, you have better feel on the bait. It's the same reason I use a spinning rod for a jerk bait. When you have that, that crank baits knocking the bottom and hitting the bottom, a lot of times what I like to do is I'm reeling along like that. And if you've seen it, I pull a lot on a crank bait. 
you know, I'll pull and twitch it a little bit, pull and twitch it a little bit. And when you're using six and eight pound test line with these March crankbaits, you can simply impart better action on the crankbait with the spinning rod. You can just, you got better feel for it. You can feel it crawling over the rocks and the gravel and that type of stuff. You can detect strikes better with it. That's another thing that you just can't duplicate on a bait caster. Also, well, is I like the, the tip section on it. Most of the tips on a spinning rod are a little bit more uh, soft or medium. Um, the rod that I use on the one is the Mega Bass uh, Whip Snake Rod. It's the same rod uh, that I use for my jerk baits. And this has got, you know, just sort of a medium tip on it. And that medium tip allows you to fight that fish a lot better when it's hooked. Because again, we're using small baits, small hooks, light line. And we're, when you're using spinning tackle, you can not only control the fish better, you can fight it better with a softer rod tip, and then you can back reel. And we've, if you've seen my videos on back reel, I never use a drag. I don't care, I'll, I'll argue anyone the point that drags are not as effective as back reeling. So I can back reel those fish on a crankbait fish that's barely hooked by one barb that you simply can't uh, control as good as if you use a drag. So from that stand, it's just a, it's a much more efficient way to do it with that. So um, anyway, when you add all that stuff up together, you know, you add up the fact you can cast farther, you can get the bait deeper, you can impart better action on it, you can fight the fish better on it. Um, it's just a much better piece of equipment to throw a crankbait on. Another example is the, the bait that I've been fishing a lot at Table Rock lately, you've probably seen in those videos, is a wiggle ward. I can fire a wiggle ward out on eight pound test line on a wig, on a eight pound test line on a spinning rod again 25 percent further than anyone possibly could on a bait caster and i can actually get a regular wiggle wart to go over 10 feet deep with six or eight pound test line on it i can get on those steep banks that they get on in the spring and i can just just fire those casts out there a mile long with that thing get it down into that zone that they do not see a wiggle wart in so from that standpoint, I always use a spinning rod for that situation. So anyway, for my, for, you know, the tip I'd like to give you guys is don't get locked in on this bait caster deal. When you, whether you're fishing a jerk bait or you're fishing a shatter app, a flat side crank bait, if you're fishing, you know, the wiggle warts, you know, all that type, all those type of baits that people fish in the springtime of the year, pick up that spinning rod, put you some six or eight pound test line on it and give it a try. I'm telling you guys right now, it's a more efficient way to fish them. You'll catch more bass on them. You'll, it's a lot less frustrating. You can do a lot more with the lure. It's a lot more versatile. It's just, it's just the, it's the best way to fish a crankbait when you're using that category of a crankbait. Now, if we go bigger than that, like if you're you start to get up in the square bills and stuff like that. Obviously, I'm using a bait caster, but there's a category of baits that are really good this time of year that you need to be picking up a spinning rod to do it. So anyway, just today's tip, guys. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Like I said, hit that subscribe button and that like button if you like this, and we'll be back soon with another video. See you.